Welcome to Kay Warner Studio. Thank you for joining me today. Today's video is a technique video on making an abstract painting with watercolors for fall leaves. Um, so you're just going to pick out some paint that look like fall leaves. So um, things that go from uh, a burnt yellow to green. So you're going to have oranges, uh, yellowish greens, greenish yellows, uh, olive greens, uh, browns, burnt oranges, and uh, everything within that spectrum. Reds, reddish, orange, um, those kinds of things. But And also, you need to have a paint that doesn't run from the water. You want a paint that's going to disperse in the water. So I'm just going to show you that, um, what I mean by that, before we get into it. Uh, so you don't need expensive wall, um, paper for this. So a Canson XL or Shafford 300, 400 series. A cold press is good. You could do rough because you want the texture. So nothing too smooth. Uh, so I'm going to wet both sides so that we don't have too much curling. Well, we won't have any. And try not to use the heat tool because you want uh, it to be uh, organic natural progression with the watercolors and the water. So you can see that this is pretty wet. And I'm just then that's how you want it. And when it starts to dry before if you have a large sheet, you can spritz it with water and I'll show you that as well. So you want a juicy a juicy brush, you know, something that's going to be able to hold your pigment because you want to be able to throw that pigment around. So let's pick, um, these are Mission Gold, and so I want to show you how they react. So when you put those on, your really wet paper, they're, they're staying in one spot. They're not really moving. Which, um, so this brand isn't ideal for this particular technique. And I'm going to try this red and put that there. As you can see, those two colors are staying put. They're not moving. And I'll try the orange, and I'll put that there, and it's just staying there. It's not, they're not moving at all. Okay, so that's a Mission Gold, so I wouldn't suggest you use this particular brand for this technique. Then I have um, the Gonzai Tanby, which are beautiful paints, but we're going to run into the same situation here. As you can see, these paints are not dispersing in the water. So I'm going to put a little more water on this and then pick up my juicy, my brush that's able to hold quite a bit of pigment and I'm going to better take this plastic off. Um, let's pick a nice uh, dark color. So this one here, it's a greenish blue or a bluish green depending on how you look at it. And now I'm going to put that down too and that's not moving either. Okay, and so let's try this uh, magenta, and let's put that down on the paper. And so that's not moving. So the Ganzai Tambi is great for card making and other things, but it's not a watercolor that likes the water. It uh, just stays put, and it doesn't travel too much. So we'll put these two brands aside. And now I'm going to try the Russian White Knights and see how that one behaves. I have the worst time opening things, I'm sure. It's, um, the kids think it's quite humorous, but uh, I'm sure uh, other people wonder about myself. Wonder about me. Now see that's not really moving too much either. The Russian brand. And so let's try this dark color and put that there. That is traveling more than um, your other brands. Let's try this orangey red. I mean, the, some of these colors would be nice uh, for your leaves, but if they're not going to behave like you want them to. 
So we'll put this we'll put this one aside too. The Russian brand. They're great for painting, but not for this particular technique. So I'm just going to remove this and throw that out. So what you're going to need is a piece of um, let's say cold press. Uh, student grade watercolor paper is fine and I have some um, Windsor Newton and Daniel Smith in this one so let's get to it so I'm just using an angle brush here to wet my surface and remember just abstract we don't blend anything we don't touch two colors together we let the water and the paper do all the hard work for us, okay? And you don't dry this with a heat tool, just let it dry on its own. Now I've wet and I've dampened that side really nice and wet, and I'm gonna flip it over because I don't want it curling up on me while I'm working. And now I'm going to dampen this side as well with lots. You don't want to do this too sparingly because you want your paint to move in the water. So no blending. Um, don't uh, use your brush to do anything or your fingers or anything else and you may need a squirt, squirt bottle with water I have the uh, distress sprayer but you don't have to use that one you can use any okay so let's get going so I have my juicy brush I'm going to pick up this um, green gold green this makes a nice um, addition to a fall painting so you just touch it oh shoot that's out of range here okay see how that moved in the in the water we're just going to touch it and you see how that disperses that's what we want things like that and put the dab of that somewhere else in here okay so that's what we're looking for paint that travels just like that and now we are going to use um, this one here is a red scarlet this is Windsor and Newton and we're going to touch that to the paper too now we're just going to start hitting the edge of our brush and let those dots take over and it can go in on top of your green but not too much just a little bit because they're complementary colors okay so now let's take um, and this one here is an Azo Deep, and we're going to touch that to the page. And don't worry if it looks muddy, you'll see a huge, um, the colors that actually have taken sometimes aren't even the ones that you put down, what you think you've got down there. So we put some more orange down, and you can see how that's moving with the water. Now you want some yellow, so you can use a primary yellow, which is right in the middle, or you can use a warm yellow, or you can use a lemon yellow, which is a, a cool one because it's on the green side. And then we're going to get some green. So you don't want a blue-green. Try to stay away from your blue-green. This one is called uh, Hooker's Green Deep. So let's put that down, just drops like this. This is exactly how I made my leaves. Now you can see that this is starting to dry off in that corner. So give it a spritz because it's not ready to be dry yet. We haven't finished covering this. And here's a different green. So I'm going to put some of that up here in this corner. And I think I should get a darker green, a strong green, and you want lots of pigment. You have not, you don't want your paints to be too watered down. And student grade will work too. You just want it to be the kind of paint that travels in the water. And now I'm going to use some of these quinacridone sienna. It's a rust color, and I'm getting that nice and load it up on my brush so you want it to be wet so it'll drop from your brush and you can put it little dabs and dashes but you don't you're not mixing anything don't want to mix, mix anything you want this to mix on its own from the water and then you can tap it like this over your finger 
And now I want to go with, um, this one is called a light red oxide. Light oxide red, so we're going to throw that around a bit. It's a rust color. A rusty orange, pardon me. And lay a few of these down on the sides where I have some white space. And over here with some raw sienna. Uh, raw sienna is, um, you know, many ma different manufacturers have this one. This one is Windsor & Newton. And that is a... Um, uh, almost like a mustard color. And now we're going to get some uh, burnt sienna. And your quinacridones are really good for this um, technique. And then we have some um, quinacridone coral. So we're going to get that in here. And that's a, a reddish orange. And so we're just going to put that up here. And then the way to top this all off is to get a darker color. So I'm just going to take uh, back to my dark green, which was sap deep. You can do it with um, a few dots like that. And then if you have a neutral or Davies Gray or a neutral tint, uh, something like that, um, you just want a couple. Oops! Let me drop my brush. You just want a couple uh, dots of that dark color, so it looks like little uh, bug bites on your leaves, and that's that. So you just leave that and put it off somewhere where it can dry. It doesn't look like much now, but it will look really nice if you let that dry on its own and let the water do all its work. And before I'm done, this is a Judykins Super Fine Spray Bottle. I bought this at Simon Says for next to nothing. Actually, I think it was $1.97 or something, but it has a fine mist. I'm just going to spray over the top so that that gets a little more uh, help uh, with the colors moving. And then I'm just going to close up my paints, and that's it. We're done. This is on a little uh, EK Success mat that I use just for this for watercoloring on. So if you um, something to take away from this, if you wet both sides of your paper, it won't curl, and you won't need the tape around the corners that I see so many people doing. And this can be done with a student grade paper. Try not to use your heat tool because you want this to move and mingle on its own. And you can see the, dis the difference in this from when we started to what it's like now. So in, in a few hours, this will be very different. I want that top corner to get some water. So that's that. So thank you very much for joining me and taking time out of your day to watch this technique video. Bye-bye.